you know, June and July is like the hardest months. That's for me. You know, it's funny. You could be on a treadmill running and think you're going someplace. And you, every the scenery might change, but in reality, you didn't go nowhere. You're still in the same place. It's like the sun went around you like a clock and came back to the top. Only thing that changes is the environment, but the lessons remain the same. Look at it like what you're doing now. You probably was doing it last year at the same time, but just a different environment. Spiritually, metaphysically, whatever your desire is, probably was the same like it was back then. And it probably was the year before that and the year before that. It depends on what we would call the chapter. And look at chapters like one chapter of Zodiac House. And there's 12 houses, so it's 12 chapters to each book. But the chapters is only sub-chapters in a life chapter, in a life, in a book of life. You know, so every month you get a new Zodiac, <clears throat> excuse me. Every month the, you can say the sun enters a new 30 degree angle. So we have 30 days in that one Zodiac house. And it has an effect on your sympathic system or what's called your nervous system, just your emotions, you know, how you go about your activities such as business, decisions, relationships. All of these have its effect upon you by the Zodiac signs. And so we might not pay attention to it because of our daily activities and what we have to do. But emotionally, inside of you, you're going through like a cycle that you usually go through all the time and you nurture them in the same manner all the time. And it remains that same chapter until you figure out a different way how to nurture it or how to alleviate yourself from it altogether. So this month for me, you know, I, I think it's the lion, man. For some reason, he gets the hardest lessons. We'll look at it now, the lessons, as like a daily thing. Meaning that every day you get a different angel to give you lessons. Look at the angels as um, every different day of the week. Monday, we get the, the angel from the moon or the god of the moon, you know, and so forth. They'll keep going for every day of the week. Now, the thing to it is like each one, it got a day lesson and it got a night lesson. The day lesson will be more of, you could say you go into meditation, you sit in your... Um, lotus position or whatever, you do your different asanas, meaning you put your body in different um, therapeutic positions and you hold that position for at least 15 minutes, you know, and you just leave your mind blank, stay at nothing. Those is like you're pulling forces, energies from these planetary bodies into your macabre or what you will call your aura, you know. Just for the record, these things that we take lightly, such as aura, macabre, we got to realize the East is a very spiritual place. It always been because that's who our true selves are. We're more soul than we are a physical body because of the simple fact you can't die. But we in the um, Western world was never really into spirituality. So we actually um, believe more in like the Bible, true stories, because of our Roman dominion and our so much oppression and abuse that we ourselves have encountered. So you look at it like when a person talks to you about spiritual things or metaphysical things or even mystical things, y'all brush it off very quick and very um, lightly like, oh, it doesn't mean anything, but it's as powerful as love, falling in love or being caught up in a habit such as smoking and drinking. Those is the forces that we discuss in the East. And I'm not from the East, I'm from New York, the Bronx. But I'm just saying in that mentality now, we have a mentality like, you know, if we don't see it, we can't touch it, and it doesn't exist in my presence right now, I don't care. And that's the wrong attitude to have towards it because we never actually had what's called sympathy. And you know, with sympathy, you got what's called a sympathic system. The sympathic system is more based upon intuition, 
your abilities of knowing, your soul journey. These are the things that make you get up every day, such as your astral body. Your astral body that when you go to sleep at night, it comes down upon you and it takes away all your feeling of displeasure, regrets. It's also the part that connects you to the soul that time. And most of the time you get a little hot, freaky, get yourself off. So everybody and every part of you have a purpose and a reason, but we never try to figure out what is the reason and what's his purpose. So on that note now, these months and these little seasons that I'm telling you about is the different teachings and different lessons that you get as it goes, as the sun goes through its 30 degree angles of the 30 day period and each day being a different God. And you have now in the, the sub demions that works for the hours, 12 hours of the day, you have a different demion. That's the ones where the people make the circles and do incantations like they alter to. Those are all the demions. It's, it's levels to a hierarchy. That's why I'm giving you the hierarchy of it. But <clears throat> we will look at the demions now as your Jehovah, your um, Yahweh, which is the same El, Isis. Oh, it's not Isis. Isis is a system more. She encompassed more, but your Osiris. All the deities of the different um, cultures, those will be your demions because they have direct contact with human beings. This is because of their density. The density level of them put them on the de frequency density of closest to being solid or cloud or gaseous in, 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 um, in their form. So they could take form, and with that form of vibration, it's tied to your body's frequency, so it, it actually resonates with your chakra system or your psychic system. So message come from top, and it comes down in the order, and the psychic system comes on to you. Now, you got what's called the seraphims. These are like the, the, the um, dragons, the lions. The actual image you see of the zodiac signs, you will call those the seraphims. You know, they have a double part meaning because the seraphims, if you look in the clouds, basically, that's what you're seeing is those type of images. The dragons, the lion with the body of a elephant or some funny shit, and your turtles and your hyenas. <clears throat> all those that you see in the cloud, those now would be what they ride on. They're not going to be all the riding in the air. They come on these dragons, like how you hear the story of Jason and the dragon or, you know, all those stories. So when they come to you to give you the message or, you know, be the messenger to you, they come on these cloud beings. That's why you always hear God came on a cloud and Moses saw him in a smoke. It's always going to be a cloud wherever he was appears at. You, you look it up. It's a cloud there or something. Or if you don't see clouds, if it's the, you're looking at the Egyptian virgins, you're always going to see him being represented with some type of animal. Either they stepping on it. For you, it looked like they stepping on it. But in reality, they stepping out of it. And so that's what the process y'all is missing to make the full con um, connection to what's going on because it would look kind of um, spooky or whatever because the way that we look at how you say um, in the Western world, the regular Bible and the concept of God is built off of human beings taking out all the good things they see out of life and, and equating it to what they want that a, a human being to be in is perfection. But in reality, when you look at nature, we have storms and we got hurricanes. We got good days and bad days. It's a mixture of both. So by us just accepting the good sunny days and deleting the bad storms, that's not realistic. Realistically, it's a combination of both. So you would incorporate that into the whole system with God and don't see him as just one being that is just about good. That would be fake because then you live in a reality of violence, killing, a whole bunch of other stuff that contradict your belief or what you want to equate a God to. So you got to realize it's a balance of energy, a yin and yang. It needs both energies for existence. So that's why we have both night and day. So with that in mind, this night and day, this energy that I'm talking about is like a shadow inside of us too. 
it's, it don't just exist in the sense of, you know, there is a God or it's good and bad or anything like that or the God's coming down on these dragons. No, we're in a whole system that is one complete atom that is a part of one big, bigger atom, which is a cell, which becomes part of one being. So on that note, you have the ability to turn into a subatomic particle to get small. When you get small, you get to see a whole nother world. Now, the process for you to get small and to see these other worlds and be the subatomic that I'm talking about, it's really done through a form of meditation. You see, meditation that we do, it's a different type of meditation. It's a long process. It don't take over like you just close your eyes and it goes like that. Because, you see, in yourself, you're going to have thoughts, you're going to have desires, pleasures, you know, anxiety, fears. All of those is going to be the first of what, when you close your eyes and start thinking, is going to start running through you. Once those start running through you now, it's like you're going to be paying attention to a whole bunch of other things except for what you're supposed to be paying attention to, which is nothing. So you have to let all those thoughts run. You have to let all whatever you feel run. And while you're doing that, you focus on your breathing. You know, we slow down the breathing and only breathe through the nose. You never breathe through your mouth. You inhale through your nose and you're going to blow back out through your nose. But you, the way you do it is you blow out first all the air out of both your um, lungs, your upper lung, I mean your, your chest and your lungs and your abs. Blow it all out. First empty the top lungs, then the bottom lungs. After you do that now, you hold it for about 10 seconds and then you inhale slowly, very slowly. And then you wait another 10 seconds and you exhale very slowly. This is gonna constrain your thoughts now. You ain't gonna be able to think no more. You're gonna start floating up out your body, floating up into the astral world and you will see it. Just as long as you know to um, look straight ahead and observe everything that you're seeing and you will see yourself float out. Now, when you start doing this, this is when you're gonna encounter like a tree will not be a tree no more. You're seeing it in this ethereal form. You moved up in your astral body, but not to the astral world, to the ethereal world. The ethereal world share a world with plants. You and plants is, exist there. So now plants, they ain't gonna look like plants. They're gonna look like gods. And you will see all the planetary gods that rules plus the dead. Everything is all there, but it's spread out in different places. And so it could be spaced out or it could be a whole collage. You would look at yourself seeing all that if you do it right as like you coming into um, Cerebro as Professor X and you slowly dimly turn down the light slowly into darkness and then a whole bunch of shadow images, this hologram start appearing all around you one by one until everything is covered. And so that will be it and you just choose which one you want to go experience or see. So I just wanted to give you an idea how it works. So now, this is kind of weird because with it, it's a lot of responsibility. Your life changes a lot. It don't just, you go and experience and then you get out of it. It's like, it start changing you and you become more active in your DNA. It activates different strands, but the process now awakens your pineal. So you feel a lot of constraint, like if somebody taking your head and squeezing it in different direction, a lot of pressure come to your head. All that is different upgrades that take place and you do it through meditation. You get teachers, if you know what you're doing and you have no fear, you get teachers in there that will assist you, spiritual beings that look like creatures and they will teach you yoga from Sama to um, Tantra to um, Qigong. All of that, plus Hatha Yoga, Kiri Yoga, they teach you that yourself. So it's like, I can't give it to you out of a book because it's like, only way I know that's what I'm doing is because I, I research everything I'm doing and then I see it like, oh, that's what it is. So like when I hear the story about how Buddha was ta taught by a spirit on the beach or whatever, Vishnu or whatever, that's resonate with me because that's how mine is. I see these things and they just, you just follow them and mimic them. So I'm just giving you a heads up. I don't know if it happened to people yet, but this is what's gonna happen, it's happening to me. 
everything I give you is from experience only. It's nothing that I'm going to tell you out of a book. I use a book to reference what I saw, and that's to verify it so I could bring it to you because I'm not going to make it up. Hello, how you doing? So when I bring it to you, it's because I looked it up. First I saw the image, then I looked it up, and then I bring it to you. Because it will be true, but you will never know because it's going to look like true lies. Everything they tell us is like the truth sandwiched between two lies, so we don't know the whole truth. And they dumbing us down on purpose by not giving us real metaphysics, real spirituality. And so we don't know everything. So I bring all this information to you for you to go research yourself. You don't have to take my word for it, but at least it gets your mind thinking and gets you going in the right direction. Well, anyway, I'm at my location. We finished this later. University of Consciousness.